again for allowing us to come into your house once again. Thank you, oh God, for all you've done, what you're doing right now, for what you're going to do. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. We lift you up, we exalt your holy name. Yeah. Now let the word take root in us, help us to grow and be what you want us to be. Go where you want us to go, say what you want us to say. Believe how you want us to believe. Touch us in me. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen and amen. amen. We bless you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We bless you in the name of the Lord. The Lord is good to us. He's worthy of the praise. Yeah. Worthy of the honor. Worthy of the glory. He's God all by himself. Beside him there is no other. Thank God that we serve the true and the living God. Yeah. We'll go to the book of 1 Peter, 2nd chapter, 9th to the 10th verse. We praise God for you all today as we celebrate the last Sunday in February and we celebrate the month of February as Black History Month along with other things, but we thank God for Black History Month. We thank God for it. Now let us go to 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10. It says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. The thought today is history heritage. History heritage. History heritage. Black History Month of 20 and 21. History is the chronological record of significant events. It's such those as times that affect us as a nation or an institution. Often including an explanation of their causes. Heritage is the property that descends to an heir, something transmitted by or acquired from a predecessor, legacy or inheritance. As we dawn upon this year and we continually go through and trailblaze through this year of 2021, the year of our Lord, it's so important for us, it's not only as we celebrate Black History Month, but all people, everyone, generations of all ethnic people, whether African American, black, colored, Negro, whatever nationality you may be, white, whoever, whatever country, it's important for us to never forget where God has brought us all from and the God who is carrying us through. The most important thing that we as people of color must understand we must teach our children teach our grandchildren, teach our great-grandchildren and generations to come about God. God should be number one to us. He's number one to our culture. He should be number one in our society, in our neighborhood, in our family tree. That everything we have is because of God, whether we realize it or not. Deuteronomy 6, chapter 1 through 7, verse says, Now these are the commandments statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land wherever ye go to possess it that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments 
which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's sons, all the days of thy life, that then thy days may be prolonged. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that they may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, the Lord says, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thine soul, with all thy might. And these are the words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And then the Bible says that then we should do what? And the children of Israel did we should do. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk to them when thy sinners in thy house and when thy walkest by the way when thou liest down and when thy rises up. We must understand that the Bible lets us know that God is angry at the wicked every day, but the Bible lets us know his anger only lasts for a moment if we repent. Uh, we'll be in the blessings of God. And God's blessings are out to thousands and thousands and thousands of generations. Generations we won't even live to see. God's blessings will flow and be with them. So we need God. We need the lineage of God to bless our heritage, to bless us, to be a blessing. So we tell it. We tell what the Lord is doing. We testify of his goodness, of his blessings towards us and how God is blessing us. We teach it. We let it be known when we serve, that we serve the God of the Holy Bible. Not an idol God, no other person, place, or thing, or any golden image, but we serve the true and the living God, the God that has all power, the God that's everywhere, the God that is everything to us. He's our God. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of our God. He's the God of all flesh. No matter how old we are, no matter what we've done, no matter what you hear, no matter what people say, it's because of God that we as a people are here today. And we're living as well as we are. God didn't have to do it, but he has done it for us. We can't, we must understand, we can go to school, we can work, we can travel. God has allowed us to buy whatever we want to buy, eat what we want to eat. That's within our means. We can live what we want to live. Wherever our money can buy, we can drive. We can eat what our money can buy. We are blessed people. But we can see today, even in society, as we celebrate this Black History Month, that black people have risen to the places they never thought they'd be. We have seen us as president, and now as a lady, black person as vice president. We can be bishops, we can be pastors, we can be lawyers, we can be doctors, we can be judges, nurses, Senators, inventors, and if you read and study history, we've invented so many things in this world to make people's lives easier to live. If you just check your history, with scientists, with congressmen, with governors, with mayors, with, with CPAs, with accountants, with entrepreneurs, with owners, with CEOs, with presidents, uh, with presidents of companies, with billionaires, with even millionaire professional athletes, and whatever we put our mind to do. With hard work, we can achieve it. We can make it. Uh, if we make the effort, we can do it. There isn't anything that we cannot do with God on our side. God has allowed us to accomplish what we have. God continues to be with us. All we got to be do is only believe that all things are possible to them that believe. And it's never too late. As long as the blood is running warm in our veins, as long as we can breathe, as long as we can think for ourselves, uh, to know that God is on our side and God will help us if we commit ourselves to him. Many of us would say and know and our ancestors would tell us that God has brought us from a mighty long way. God has brought us, just like the children of Israel, God brought them out of that Egypt land experience. And even where we came from, of being kings and queens, but now have had to come through slavery and come through our Egypt land experience. But God has blessed us from people who were sold over to this country uh, as native land of slaves and who were not free, but not considered equal 
to a people who have freedom and equal rights and to and the struggle yet continues. All we gotta do is look at last year and see that the struggle of racism is still there, social injustice is still there, and God allowed the color to be removed as it raises his ugly head in 2020, and it got captured by the light of the camera, by technology, uh, that it still exists, and there's still things going on under cover. But the word of God lets us know that whatever's done in darkness will surely come to light. What people hide and try to hide can only be hidden for a little while. And as we see the Bible fulfilling itself every day, and we know that Jesus is soon to come, and it doesn't take as long now for things to come out. It doesn't take as long for things to become uncovered because of the advancement of, of technology. And as we see our salvation nearer than when we first believed, we must understand people all over the world that you are not a saint, you are not a Christian if you hate. You must repent of your sins and all your unrighteousness and be converted. God has called us all to love. To love him and to love everybody. And the Bible lets us know how can you say you love God who you've never seen and can't love your brother and sister, the people that you see every day. And the devil is a lie and that he's a father of all lies and trick people to believe that. But don't let the devil trick you. Don't let the devil cause you to fail and lose your blessing from the Lord. Your healing from the Lord. Maybe I'm sick. Uh, maybe I'm, oh my God. You'll lose your deliverance if you let the devil trick you. And you'll ultimately lose your promise of the promised land of heaven from the Lord. God will forgive you if you mean it from your heart. God forgives us. And God's command all mankind to forgive each other. And we all need to learn how to forgive. And the Bible says, our Heavenly Father won't forgive us, and we won't forgive others. It doesn't mean we won't suffer the consequences of our actions, of what we've done. But at least we know we'll be in right standing with God, and we ask God to forgive us. And the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ, when we confess our sins and repent, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. But the Bible lets us know, but he that hated his brother, and, and that brother or sister, who is every man, woman, boy, or girl, the Bible says, in darkness. Uh, and whatever's in darkness, knoweth not where he goeth, because darkness has blinded his eyes. And even as we see this time we celebrate Black History Month, many are even warned in your same race. Uh, it's not always the other race, but you're warned in your same race. But God is a God of love and not of hate. Yeah. You got to love everybody and treat everybody right. Trouble uh, should not be the only time that we call on God. We should be calling on God every day. Yeah. We should serve God every day. And many of us. Know that our ancestors, our foreparents would tell us that we're truly blessed by God. God has been, he was, and he still is a mighty God. He's a mighty, mighty good God. And with all the disagreements we have, all the opinions we have, all the ethnicities we have in this world, all the likes and dislikes, God has blessed us to live in the greatest nation in the world. A land where we can, for the most part, Give God praise. We can praise God. We can magnify his name without being sent to prison or killed for worshiping and serving God and praising the only true and living God. So even though we celebrate uh, this black history just this month, we know that we ought to celebrate each other every day. This is the shortest month in the year, so we know that we ought to celebrate each other every day. We can't just wait for February. February. We ought to celebrate what God has done for us all year long. Uh, the black church is so significant even in black history. When we celebrate Black History Month, we look at the inventor inventors, we look at creators, we look at the civil rights leaders, we look at those who have taken the reins. We live it's so notable to see the handiwork of God and work in their life. They couldn't have achieved what they've done uh, by themselves, but God had to guide them, God had to, to lead them along the way, and to help them maneuver in every step that they took. 
And as we know, we couldn't have made it, and they couldn't have made it without the Lord on our sides. The ability of our forefathers to pull us through in this country, Jim Crow laws and lynchings and beatings and even murders to foster civil rights movement, underground railroads and causes for justice of the people. They must have remained deeply rooted in the cause and deeply rooted in their faith in God. That one day they would overcome their belief in God, their whole spirit, man devoted to God, making a way out of nowhere. Uh, when we look at history, it says from 1619, the first recorded uh, 20 black slaves sold in Jamestown, Virginia, in America, to 1758, the first recorded black church organization. Up until now, we know God was on our side. Even in our denomination, the Church of God in Christ, 113 years ago, Bishop Mason organized the Church of God in Christ. In the midst of adversity, in the midst of everything that was going on, this Pentecostal church that believed in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. We believe in the Bible. We believe that the Bible is the only infallible written word of God. Our doctrines are based off the word of God. Through being oppressed, we realize that the Lord even was on his side to allow him to accomplish what he did and organize this great church. And Jesus, the Son of God, to get through helps us and helped him to get through to see the light at the end of the tunnel. To live in expectation, God gives us faith to live in expectation. Through horrific circumstances, we cannot let the gap down. We cannot quit in the midst of horrific circumstances and things going our way. But we must have hope in something that's greater than we are. And we must have hope in Jesus. And we that are believers know that our hope should be built in nothing less than Jesus Christ's blood and righteousness. We know that we need Jesus. And it's that resurrection power of God that God has given us through Jesus Christ. And if God can raise Jesus from the dead, I don't care who you are, if God can raise Jesus from the dead, that same power working in us, there isn't anything that we cannot do. The Bible lets us know that all things are possible to them that believe. Isaiah 61 and 1 through 3 tells us that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Oh my God, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to com com comfort all that mourn, to appoint to them that mourn in Zion, the scripture says, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. Is anybody heavy? God will give you the spirit of, oh God, praise for that spirit of heaven. Is that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old ways, and they shall raise up the former desolation. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolation of many generations. And then Luke comes on and finishes on and says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me with Jesus speaking. He said, Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, anybody broken, anybody poor, uh, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set and liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The Lord will make a way somehow. Oh, people are still going through, but the Lord will make a way somehow. He continues to make a way. And many have went uh, to the Lord in prayer. Many are believing in change. And I believe God's going to bring even more change in our world and our society. Uh, God's going to bring forth a change to the landscape even of our nation, the Lord. And even when you read through history and you look at the history in America of blacks, in 1976, as a part of the United States Bicentennial, President Gerald Ford officially recognized Black History Month, calling upon America to seize the opportunity to honor the too often neglected accomplishment of black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. Sometimes we're forgotten. Sometimes we've been tossed aside. Even God makes a way to make a window 
for us to be seen the things that God has allowed us to accomplish. So it's important for us to remember uh, through all the things we do, if we don't know where we came from, we don't know where we're going. And history will repeat itself. But we have to know where we're going and we need to know that the Lord is on our side. So everything that shaped us to be the people that we are in the world today, we can't lose our heritage. We can't lose who we are. The history of American people in our nation. Uh, nothing in that history is more important than God being number one. Saints of God, people of God, as you listen to me, we need to make God number one in our nation, in our ethnicity, all across the world. So forgetting God, neglecting God, displacing God is out. Everything we got to do by prayer. We need to have strategy. We need to have the wisdom of God and what to do and how to do, which way and how we should do it. God is intricate. Oh, he intrinsically involved with every aspect of our lives, even the fabric of our lives. We must still tell him. We must still preach him. We must still testify. We must still rely on him and let the world know that we cannot forget the Lord, our God. I know we're going through some things, but we didn't create ourselves. We can't sustain ourselves. We can't will it to happen, but we can make it happen with God on our side. And he gives us strategy of what to do by prayer and seeking him and living for him and being obedient to him. For we have in him the goodness of God. And the Bible lets us know that Jesus Christ is our life. Then say uh, what call it said, Jesus Christ is everybody's life. When you're living, it's because of Jesus Christ. So we can never, ever, ever forget Jesus. When Jesus will never forget. And we are all sing, I know we sing some all kind of songs, but we all want to say, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. How you brought a made away for me. How you helped me. And even in us, we should say, Jesus, I'll never again forget how you saved us. We as the children, like the children of Israel, who God has delivered from even our Egypt experience. God has delivered us and continues to deliver us, continues to make a way for us. And we dare not forget. In the Bible, Deuteronomy 4 9, here God tells the children, He says, Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them to thy sons and thy sons' sons. Teach them. He said, Take heed when you skip down to the 23rd verse. And take heed unto yourself, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God which he made with you and, and make you a graven image. Don't do anything like that or any likeness of anything or forget about me, which the Lord thy God has forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire and a jealous God. Deuteronomy 4 and 31 says, For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, not forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. Whatever God has promised us, Prayers. God will answer even our foreparents' prayers. Those prayers, even some of them have went away, but those prayers are still in the atmosphere. Those prayers still have to be answered. That were laid out hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years ago. Somebody prayed that we make it. Somebody prayed you'd overcome. Somebody prayed that you come through. And those prayers are still circling the atmosphere. They didn't die when the person died. Just like when Dr. King said, I have a dream. The dream didn't die when he died. The dream is yet alive. And God will answer if we commit our ways to him. And continue to serve him. God will continue to bless us. Eyes haven't seen, nor he heard, but or even in the heart of man, but God has in store for them that love him. Glory to God. God is yet making a way out of nowhere. Somebody thinks they made it, but you didn't make it on your own. It's because God is on your side. God is just blessing you. It says, Then beware in Deuteronomy 6 and 12 through 19. It says, Then beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Uh, thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name. He shall not go after other God. What that mean? We shouldn't go after, we shouldn't serve money. The love of money is the root of all evil. We serve the Lord, we keep God number one. He said, the other gods of the other people, we don't serve other gods, but we serve God, which are around and about you. 
I know people try to come over and train things, but this nation was built upon in God. We trust. Glory to God. We got to keep God first in this country, in this nation. Uh, we want this nation to prosper and to be what God would have it to be. The 15th verse says, For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy me from off the face of the earth. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in my sight. Glory said, Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and his testimony and his statutes which he commanded thee. Glory, and thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to thy fathers, to cast out all thine enemies before thee, as the Lord has spoken. We can't stop praying, we can't stop serving God because we think we made it. Well, it's because of God that we're here. Deuteronomy 8, 11, between said, Be well that thou forget not the Lord thy God, and not keeping his commandments, and his judgment, and his statutes, which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten, and art full, and hast built goodly houses, and dwelt therein. And when thy herds, thy flocks multiply, and thy silver, thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou had is multiplied, then thine heart is lifted, and thou forget the Lord. There are people that are getting lifted uh, in this time, because they see where they got. They're, they're like the rich men that's building extra barns and don't know that their soul is going to be required for them. Just because God raised you up the way you are, don't you forget God. The scripture as he told Israel, he said, and thou forget, don't forget the Lord that thou which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, out of whatever your captivity was, whatever your Egypt land was, where your hands, don't you forget God from the house of bondage who led Thee through that great and terrible wilderness, God said, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, and there was no water. Who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint? Glory to God. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that they might humble thee, that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. We're preaching today because we're living in a time where people are trying to forget God. They what God has done uh, for us and where God has brought them from. Then they are, are living in a godless nation where people are not training their children about God, but we got to go back to teaching and putting the word of God in our children that we may have the world that we need. You can't fix it. You can have all kind of meetings, all kind of things you want, but if you dispel and don't put God in the midst of it, you're not going to get the success that you need. You're not going to make it to what you need to have if you exclude God, God's got to be included in everything. The only way we can make it, and we got to go back to teaching and training and instructing and letting them know oh, what our God has done and what he continues to do for us. He said, and thou shalt say that I have my power and my might of my hand have got me this well. Somebody said, I got wealthy on my own. You didn't get wealthy on your own. God bless you. He, he raised up the just as well as own just. You may not have prayed, but somebody prayed for you that God would bless you. He said, but the word says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to get well, that thee may establish his covenant, which he swear to thy fathers as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do all, forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods. Somebody said, I'm not walking after other gods. Yes, you are. Uh, you serve the other God. If anything else in your life is more important than God, that's your God. Glory to God. And serve them and worship them. I testify against you this day. They shall surely perish, the word said, as the nation with the Lord destroyed before your faith. Oh, why do you think that America is erupted from the inside out? Glory to God, because God's got to be number one. Glory to God. How do you got to believe what's on that money? That money says, God, we trust. The Constitution, we talk about God. This nation was built upon godly principles. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to People are being sweared in. You were sweared in on the Bible. And now people are coming in saying, I'm not going to put my hand on the Bible. But whatever we built this country on, my God. Hallelujah. We got to go back to do it in the way God says. My God. Hallelujah. Yeah, we haven't seen nothing yet. Glory to God. This pandemic got to be enough to turn this world around, to turn this country around, to turn these nations around. Ah, 
Glory to God. But he said, as the nation with the Lord destroyed before your faith, so shall he pay it because you would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. Don't you hear what the Lord is speaking? Don't you hear what the Lord is saying? Uh, politicians, everybody that thinks you're an authority, you need to get some spiritual good counsel. Oh, somebody that believes in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost has got connection with God to give you counsel. Glory to God. He said, don't forget when God gives us rest from our enemies. Glory to God. God gives us safety. But you know what? If God don't keep us safe, if God don't keep the house, we won't be kept. Ah, there's all kind of sleeper cells, all kind of things going on, but God keeps the house. Glory to God. Deuteronomy 25 and 9, he said, Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God has given thee rest from all thine enemies around about in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it. Thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. Lord, don't forget what I've done for you. America, don't forget what I've done for you. Black people, don't forget what I've done for you. Uh, white people, whoever you are, don't forget what God has done for you. I know in Black History Month that I'm talking to you. Don't you forget what God has done for you. Glory to God. When the time is, when the time is to serve Him, when the time is to call on God's name, you ought to be calling on Him. You ought to pray to Him. Look to God. Hallelujah. Now consider this. You that forget God, unless I tear you into pieces, and there be none to deliver, God said in Psalm 50 and 22. Psalm 9, 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all their nations that forget God. Let's not forget all the benefits that God has given us in serving him. Who forgiven all our sins, who heals our bodies, who heals us from all diseases. Uh, even the one that gives the doctors the ability to come up with vaccines to be able to even to give us now. Uh, it's no goodness of ourselves, but it's the goodness of God. It's God that delivers us from oppression and depression. It's God that delivered us from what we had to go through in our ancestors. God delivered us. It's God that crowns us with life and with loving kindness and tender mercy. It's God that satisfies our mouth with good things, uh, with blessed. The Bible says get wisdom. If anything, black people get some wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline for the words of my mouth, the Bible says. Forsake her not. And she shall preserve thee. Love her. And she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom. You get wisdom from the word of God. Glory to God. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get an understanding. We need an understanding. And we get it from the Lord. Hallelujah. Seek it while it may be found. Call on it. Why is me? It's God that preserves our lineage. It's God that preserves our heritage. It's God that gives us history. It's God that blesses us. Don't let us forget God. So in 1 Peter 2 and 9, NIV says, But ye are chosen people. Glory to God. How do you get chosen? You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that he may declare the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not the people, but now you are the people of God. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Listen, if you love God, you obey his voice indeed. You will be a very special person to God if you obey his word. All people in the world who have repented, I don't care if you're blue, black, green, purple, whatever color you are. If you are repentant and you're living for God, if you're a true saint of God, you're a true Christian, you are a chosen generation to God. Glory to God. God, thank God that we don't have a God uh, that's prejudiced, that's racist, that God is calling all. All you got to do is repent and become godly sovereign. So if you're a saint, you're a true person that has repented and have God in your life, you are a chosen generation to God. No matter what color you are, uh, you're chosen to God. We're all serving in the kingdom of God. We ought to be one big happy family. Some people say this is the most segregated day on the calendar. And we wonder why uh, some of the doors have to be shut, even in the church, so we can get it right. Glory to God. That we can all be together, serve God together. There's only one God. There's only one Jesus. There's only one baptism. There's only one Holy Ghost. And God's calling us to get this thing right before it's too late. 
It's about the kingdom of God. Let the kingdom of God come. Let his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, sanctified. We ought to be sanctified by the Lord's spirit. We're in the royal priesthood because we have the power of God. Glory to God. God has given us love, power, and a sound mind. Glory to God. How are you going to defeat the enemy? It be God on your side. You need to get a strategy from God. Just like God told David, he said, David said, shall I pursue? And God told David, yes, you can pursue. You need God to answer. We need to learn how to get a prayer through so we can know what step to take, what direction we need to go. Oh, glory to God. They're trying to look who's going to lead the black people, who's going to lead these people. God is our leader. Glory to God. I need to be in connection with God. You better get a connection with him. You better hear what the Lord is saying. What the Spirit is saying to the church. Power and authority over the devil. Power to overcome this world. Do Jesus Christ. Because our hope is built in Jesus. We ought to live in hope and expectation of what God is going to do every day. You need hope. You need faith. The Bible says without faith is impossible to please God. So you got to have hope working in your life. Every day you got to give up in expectation of what God is going to do. You got to live separated from sin and shame. There's a lot of people that are straddled of fence. There's a lot of people that's lukewarm. Glory to God. They only serve God on Sunday. They do everything all week long. But God wants you to commit your whole mind, body, and soul to Him each and every day. Preach yourself to the bubbles you be sold out, devoted to him, so he can refresh you, he can restore you, he can renew you in him. So we honor God and we worship God. We praise him because God has acquired us. God has chose us. God cares for us. And God will delight in us when our ways please him. We are holy nation unto God. We live in the promises of God. And we got some free benefits because we live for the Lord. So that's why I close and we celebrate the history. Celebrating black history of what God has done in our day. Even what God has done in the world. What God has done for America. We owe it all to God. I know we had to go through some suffering. We had to go through some pain.
we need the Lord. We need the Lord in our neighborhoods. All these major cities that are spreading out being the smaller cities. You're killing one another. Killing, drugging, all kind of things are going on in society. That God has blessed us. We need the Lord on our side. We need Jesus. We need the Lord. We've had a lot of committee meetings. We've had a lot of gatherings, a lot of talk. But we need the Lord. We need Jesus. We need him. Glory to God. We need him. We can't put him on the back burner. We need the Lord. We all need him. You listen to me. You don't know the Lord. You haven't repented of your sins. You got hate in your heart. Got malice in your heart. Unforgiveness in your heart. You won't forgive yourself. You won't forgive others. You're evil. You're committing evil. You need to repent right now. You need to ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you of your sins. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner. Come into my life. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe that God raised you from the dead. Now, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. Be Lord and Savior of my life. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. You said that prayer you already said. What a wonderful world this would be if everyone had Jesus in their life. Jesus makes the difference. The God of all flesh, the God of the Bible, the Holy Bible, makes the difference. We need the Lord in every city, every household, every neighbor needs the Lord. We need God. We need him to bring us out. We need him to save us. We need him to heal us. Maybe you're sick in your body right now. God is the God that healed all my diseases. Read your Bible. And then he gives physicians the knowledge of how to do surgery. He gives them the knowledge of sometimes finding what's wrong with you. But don't forget to pray to God to heal your body. Even if you've got to take that surgery, pray to God that God will lead the doctor's hands. Show them where it's at. Give them what to do. Let it show up on the scope. And sometimes God may even heal you on the table. They may not even have to go in and do it. But make sure you call God because God is a healer. So we pray right now. You can put your hand on whatever ailing you. Put your hand on it as a point of contact. And we pray right now that God will heal you. By Jesus' Christ, we were in our healed. Be healed, be delivered in the name of Jesus. From the inside out, from the outside in, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. The last can be, Lord, have mercy. Somebody got dormant diseases, don't even know in their body. Now God, try up the last can be from the root. Glory to God. Be dried up from the root. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the doctor tell you what was there is God in Jesus' name. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Heal right now, God. Jesus is a ball that kill you. He's a healing ball. Woo, glory to God. Then it needs to be filled and refilled with the Holy Ghost. So your prayer, if you're saved, if you repent of your sins, is Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. That's your prayer until you receive the Holy Ghost. Show me what I need to do to receive the indwelling power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, the Holy Ghost convicted you of sin to save you. But you need the indwelling power of the Holy Ghost that you can live right, talk right, give right, serve right, do right, love right, walk right. Woo, glory to God. The Holy Ghost will enable you if you allow it to come in and be resident. Lead you, guide you in all truth until you grieve it out. Okay, grieve the Holy Spirit. Once you get it, don't grieve it, but feed it the word of God. Praising it, worshiping God, studying God's word, praising him. Don't grieve it by doing sin and having malice and all kind of things because soon it's going to leave you. If you have it, it will leave. Glory to God. You need to be filled and refilled. Be filled and refilled today. Let love abound. Let the love of God abound in everyone's heart. God, let love take over the world. The power of love. Your love. 
your everlasting eternal love that has no beginning and no end. Let it come in every household. Let it touch everyone. Let love, let the warmth of love enter every household, every person right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Let change begin with each individual in the name of Jesus. We thank you now for history, heritage. We thank you for where you brought us from, where you're taking us to, and what you're doing right now. We give you praise for it. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Come on.